Fuck on the steel. We're not We're supposed, supposed to. Basically, do what I'm about to do on the Saturday. There you go. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it, say it. We're not supposed to buy and sell wear fiddles on the, sat the Sabbath day, which is today, Saturday. Excellent. Now, from here, it's up to you to decide if I'm going to do that or not. Remember earlier, it says, I'm afraid of thy judgments. If you really believe in God, you're going to show if you fear him or not. That's the step one that we got to take to learn how to get wisdom. I have dreams and like I have visions and stuff. And um, I had a couple of them, a couple, and I've seen I seen spirits and stuff. So seen spirits and stuff. Okay, go ahead, please do. Um, but the dream I had where I knew for a fact that was the second coming of Christ is because it was like a real big explosion, and it was like a. I couldn't even explain the size of, it was like a tornado and then around it, it was four fire tornadoes around it. It was like a big explosion, like an atomic bomb and the, the, the tornado was the size of an atom, atomic bomb and it was four fire tornadoes around it. So we saw like destruction pretty much, right? Yes, but when I was looking at it, I was calm and I was content and something told me he's coming back to get his people. The book of Second Peter, chapter 3 and verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. The one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So it says God ain't slack when it comes to his promise. His promise of what? of destroying this place and saving his people, right? That's gonna happen, read. As some men count slackness, but it's long suffering towards us, not willing that any shall perish. So have you heard growing up, you were in the church growing up? Thank you. Group of church? I, I grew up in church myself, right? And I'm pretty sure you heard this thousands of times. God coming back, God coming back soon. We're gonna come back soon, right? But over time, a lot of our people, we, we start to forget. You know what, you ain't come back yet. What's going on? I'm gonna go do what I gotta do, right? He said he ain't slack concerning his promise. As a matter of fact, he says, uh, read verse nine again. The verse nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but it's long suffering towards us. He says he's long suffering to us, meaning what? He got mercy on us, he giving us grace period to get ourselves right. Because he don't want to see his people be destroyed when it comes to that destruction. But you saw your dream, right? He don't want that for everybody. But unfortunately, yeah, that was still on the <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of our people don't get it. Yeah. Read on. Not willing that any should perish, there you go. Read. but that all shall come to repentance. But everybody ain't gonna repent. Sis. Like you were saying earlier, some of our people are gonna walk by. They're not going to try to listen at all. Some people are going to stand here and listen, and then after we leave, they're going to do their own thing with you. We see it all the time. They say it to us, right? We do. But the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is the day that you saw your dream, right? Destruction. When Christ comes back, he's not coming to give out uh, cotton candy, lollipops, hugs and kisses to everybody. Nah, it ain't happening. This Christ right here that we read about, he's coming to kill, and he's coming to save his people. Read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He says he's going to come as a thief in the night. What does that mean? You not going to know when he's coming. I'm not going to know when he's coming. You can't prepare for him to come. She can't prepare for him to come. It's a thief in the night. It's whatever we least expect it. Read. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. When it says the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, it's talking about the rulership kingdoms on this earth. The heavens, that's talking about the people that are in power on this earth. The powers that be, the elite, all of these different countries that are ruling right now, they're going to get destroyed. That's why the World War III conversation he was talking about earlier. If you look on the news right now, not the local CNN news, I'm talking about worldwide news. You're going to see the conversations being had right now. They got nuclear missiles already ready. You know what I'm saying? That's going to happen. That's not just for no reason. That is going to come, read on. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I want you to imagine that. The elements. Read it again. The element is a one word or elements? Elements. Plural. Read. And the elements. The elements. Right? Read on. Shall melt 
with fervent heat. It says it shall melt with fervent heat. That's the kind of fire that can melt metal. That's the kind of fire that'll burn all the trees, the sidewalks, buildings. You ever seen those movies, right? Big old bomb hit, everything catch on fire and burn away. That's gonna happen, that's written in the Bible. Watch this. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Everything in the earth shall be what? Shall be burnt up. That includes people, right? We don't. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Now knowing that this is gonna happen, having dreams about here. this, that this is gonna happen, watch this. What manner of persons are ye ought to be in all the holy conversation and godliness? It says, how shall we be as a people and how shall we act day in and day out, knowing that this day is coming. It's not a guess, this is facts. It says, how should we be acting every single day, knowing that this is coming? Do I want to be a part of that fire, or do I want to be on the opposite side of the spectrum? I messed around and read the whole book of Revelation when I was 10 years old. Uh -huh. I don't know what made me do it, but I read the whole book of Revelation. I was so scared. <laughs> right. I was so, like 10 years old. There's two different things you can do. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Because you said earlier, you know, that you Israel from the tribe of Ephraim, right? Read them. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. What's going on, my God? You good? You good? Grab a flyer real quick. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So it says, what does God require of you, right? What does God want you to do? Okay, you got a flyer, right? You good? So it says, what does God want? What does he want from us? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. It says we got to fear him first. That's step number one. How do we fear God? You know how to fear God? How do you think we should fear God? Um, he said it. <laughs> he said it earlier? Um, follow the Ten Commandments. Um. Okay, we'll go with that so far. Follow the commandments, right? Watch this, read them. Let's go, read what you got in the Psalms. Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, when you start to really understand how to fear God, that's when you really get wisdom, sis. That's the first step of getting real wisdom. Not what the school systems teach us, not what church taught us, right? Wisdom comes when you learn how to fear Him. But what does that mean? Read. A good understanding uh -huh. have all they that do His commandments. Because a lot of us as black people, we walk around saying that we woke. We say we know who we are, we know our history. But the real understanding comes once you do what? That do his commandments. His commandments, like you said earlier. See, you, you, you wasn't off with the answer. When you start reading about the commandments of God, and you apply them and start doing it, you know what? It says, don't do this. All right, shit, I'm doing it. Let me fix that. Do that. All right, let me do that next time. Correct this. Walk like this. Act like this. Eat this. Don't eat that. Once you really start applying that and doing that, then your mind is going to open up to the real understanding of what this whole world is about. Because a lot of us walk around, we don't know nothing. We walk you dead out here. You could ask a, a, a regular black man, woman, uh, four or five questions, and you're not going to get no answers. We walk around here thinking we know what life is about. We don't know nothing. This whole world is being ran by enemies, God's enemies. People don't know that. But it says once you do that, that's when you're going to get understanding. Is that more? Give me that, my flesh tripping. I think it's Psalms 109, verse 9. I'm going to listen, but I do have to go eat. You have to eat? Yeah, I was about to go. I was in there and I came back outside. Okay. Psalms chapter 119, verse 120. Uh -huh. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. It says, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. What does that mean? Read on. And I am afraid of thy judgments. I'm what? I am afraid. Of thy judgments. Once we understand that concept, if I don't do what God tells me to do, there's going to be a judgment for that. I'm going to move different. How I decide and what I do day in and day out, I'm going to switch how I move because I'm afraid of the judgments that come from that. Right. That's when the wisdom is going to start coming to your mind. Now, real quick, give me Nehemiah 10:31. I'm going to help you out with the uh, one of the laws that you can apply today. All right. This is how you can start applying the commandments. Can I eat? <laughs> you can eat. Okay. But I got you. I got you. Watch this. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. Uh -huh. And if the people of the land 
So if the people of the land, I'm gonna break it down into layman's terms, right? If the people in your hood or the block with their stores bring where? Bring it where? What is where? What's where? Real quick, let me ask that question. Oh yeah, it's like crazy. I tell you something right now. See, I like doing that because I like to make sure you understand. I'm gonna ask this one. She talked with the weather over there. It says the people of the land bring it where? You ever went to a warehouse? Yeah. What's in the warehouse? Stuff. Stuff. Just stuff. Okay. Just stuff. Goods. Items. Things right. buy. Yeah. Right? You got a warehouse to house the wear that you're going to buy. But these people that own these blocks, they got stores. They put their wear in the stores. Right. Really. And if the people of the land bring wear or vittles. Or vittles. What's vittles? I have no clue. Boom. You heard your mom say that? I'm about to go get some vittles. I'll be right back. That's a country thing. Where are you from? I'm from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. New York, Bronx. Okay, y'all all from the Gulf. Okay, you from the Gulf. Top. Yeah, I don't say middles like that. Nah, I don't. Y'all say, <laughs> say other words. Uh, but middles is food. The people of the land bring anything to buy or food for you. On the seventh day. On any day of the week. To sell. Wait, wait. If they bring any wear or food on the what day? On the seventh day. Why did they say on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday? It says that they bring this stuff to your land on the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Saturday. Really? To sell, to sell it to you, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. That we would not do what? Buy it of them on the Sabbath. That we will buy it from them on the Sabbath day. What does that mean, sis? You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to like do that on the Sabbath day, right? Do what? Tell me to burn this here. I'm gonna read it again. And if the people of the land bring where or any vittles on the Sabbath day. Hey, so what's going on? It says hey, the people bring anything to buy, like when, 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 when it comes to items, goods, or food, if they bring that to the stores on Saturday, right? To sell, to sell it to you, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. Ah. What are you trying to say to me clicked. right now? <laughs> Explain it to me. I, I think it clicked with you. What do you think it means? You're not supposed to basically do what I'm about to do on the Sabbath. There you go. Saturday. Say it, say it, say it. Go ahead, say it. We're not supposed to buy and sell wear fiddles on the, sat the Sabbath day, which is today, Saturday. Excellent. You're smart. You're not supposed to do that on a Saturday. The reason why I'm showing you that, the reason why you're like, ah, oh, because now I know I, I got to go in there and do it. Oh, I'm hungry. Don't worry about that. But my, uh, I gotta show you anyway because if I didn't, that means I don't love you as my sister. Right, right. We are here to show our people the truth, right? right. They can show us that in church. Right. That is cool. Yeah. Now from here, it's up to you to decide am I gonna do that or not. Remember earlier, it says, I'm afraid of thy judgments. If you really believe in God, you're gonna show if you fear him or not. That's the step one that we gotta take to learn how to get wisdom. Don't worry about that. Watch this. I'm gonna show you something different real quick. Matthew 6. You read this earlier. Right? Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Uh -huh. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What's that mean? Take no thought for your life. I'm telling you that going to the thought. Okay, that's cool. I like that is. It means don't worry about how you're gonna get taken care of when it comes to your life through this earth, right? Don't, not saying don't think about it at all, don't make plans, right? Right. But freedom, watch. What you shall eat. What you should do what? Therefore I say unto you. What you said what? Read it again. Take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat. Don't worry about what you will eat, where your food gonna come from. Or what ye shall drink. Don't worry about where your beverage is gonna come from, right? Nor yet for your body. Or for your clothes. Read on. What ye shall put on. Uh-huh. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Ain't your life more precious or more important than a plate of food? Like Think about it. Precious. Your best friend, you got a best friend, bro, brother, sister, brother, who, who's somebody who's close to you? My blood brother. Your blood it's brother. You talk to him every day, right? Something like that. Something like that. Let's say if he called you on the phone, or you called him, let's say you reached out to your brother. I'm going to talk to my brother today. Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? Yeah, you crossed my mind. I just want to check when you see how you doing, right? And he said, oh, sis, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hold on real quick. Let me eat this food. Click. <laughs> how would you feel? <laughs> um, I'll be like, um, you can stay on the phone while you eat. Right, like, 
Do a hang up with a phone? Yeah, we gonna hang up. Like, what was this our last time talking or something? What if this is our last time talking and you you decided well, to you close? Choke on your food and you yeah, you choke your food and you die. Or I get in an accident because I'm driving right. and you hang up the phone to go eat. Right. Right, that's what he's saying. Read it again. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what she what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? So he said, ain't your life more important than the plate of food? That conversation with you and that person you love, that's more important than the plate of food. He said, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that food. Read on, watch this. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. He says, behold, the fowls of the air. What does that mean? Um. Behold, the fowls of the air. I was listening to something and it said something like, um, the devil is in the air. Okay, now, nah. the birds. It says, pay attention to the birds. You ever got a moment in life to stop and actually like just watch birds and see what they do? There's a reason why in the Bible it tells us to pay attention to certain things. Like it'll say, for somebody who's lazy, it'll say, pay attention to the ant. The ant, they don't, they don't, they don't slack when it comes to work. They don't, they're some of the hardest working creatures on this earth. You step on their little house, they're gonna rebuild that, that ant uh, hill in like an hour. <laughs> yeah, they're going down. They go, they're going in, right? It says, watch the birds. See how they move. Read on. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, not. They don't plant seeds and grow food and crops and stuff like that. Birds don't do that. Read. Neither do they reap. They don't go back and collect what grew on that earth. Read nor gather into barns. They don't have a storage unit where they can go and get their food. They don't got refrigerators, cabinets, stuff that we have, pantries. Read. Yet, your heavenly Father feedeth them. There's not a bird in the sky that doesn't have food. Not one. No matter where they fly, whether they migrate to the south or come back up north, there's a certain point in time where they will fly down it might be a sister on the ground that's throwing out seeds randomly. Or it might be somebody who threw some bread out. Or it might be some worms that just came up because it was raining. They all got food. Nobody, nobody starves. Right? Read. Are ye not much better than they? Are, are what? Are ye not much better than they? Aren't you much better than a bird? Right. We're the greatest people on this earth. The Israelites. Right. You from the tribe of Ephraim. Christ says, look. They get fed all day, every day. Read on. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? You can think, how tall are you? Five, five and a half. Five, five and a half? Five. Why you say five, five and a half? Would you be five, six? No. Would you be five, seven? You like the height? Uh, I think, I don't know. I think I am five, five and a half, like on the die. Okay, on the die. All right, cool. If you wanted to be five, eight, can you make yourself be five, eight? Without putting on heels? No. no matter how hard you try. It'll be 5'8 tomorrow. I can't do that. No. It is what it is. No matter how much I worry and stress about my conditions, I can't change nothing about that. Right? We don't. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. He says, don't worry about your clothes, all right? Don't worry about what you're going to have to put on. Consider the lilies of the field, right? When you ever look at a field of lilies, they're perfect, beautiful. We don't. How they grow, they toil not, uh -huh. neither do they spin. Uh -huh. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory. Solomon, King Solomon, you heard about him in the Bible? One of the richest men on this earth. He had power, riches, fame, jewelry, clothes, linen, fabrics, all of that. It says Solomon in all of the stuff that he had. That even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He wasn't even as perfect as the lilies of the field. We you don't know, watch this. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, uh -huh. which to this day is, uh -huh. and tomorrow is cast into the oven. So one day you got grass on the field that grows beautifully, next day it goes down. Throughout different seasons, the grass turns brown, somebody goes back green. Perfect condition. Everything moves in course. If God does all of that, read this. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? O ye what? O ye of little faith. It says, it's a faith test right there. Yeah. That's the test of your faith right now, sis. Oh. You know the law of the Sabbath is not to buy food, not to buy clothes, right? Not to buy yourself. Christ says, don't worry about what you're going to eat for the day. How do you know that if you decide right now, since you've been standing here, you heard my words say, don't buy on the Sabbath. 
how do you know that if you say, you know what, Lord? All right, today, I'm going to try. I'm not going to go to the restaurant. I'm not going to spend money. I don't want to break the Sabbath. Now, I don't know what all the laws you have yet. I'm going to learn. But for that one that I just learned today, I'm going to start right there. All right? I'm going to go somewhere else. How do you know that he's not going to send somebody your way and give you food for free? The reason why I'm staying so hard on this point is because I've tested it myself. Straight up. This ain't no Christianity or it may happen. It's no. It's written in the Bible. I've seen it happen myself. That happened to me soon. Real. What? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Don't worry about, ah, oh, shoot. Well, I'm going to eat then. I'm hungry. Or oh, what shall we drink? Or oh, wherewithal shall we be clothed? Uh -huh. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. The other nations worry about stuff like that because they don't have a God. They don't have a God. I'm going to say it again. The other nations of people, they don't have a God. We have God. God has created everything, the heaven, the earth, the birds that he feeds every day, the clothes, uh, the grass, and the lilies. That God that did all that is our God only. I'm going to touch on that later. Keep on reading what you got. Later, for, I have to go. For your heavenly Father knoweth... My bad, we got to go to this. I'm going to finish this and we're going to close it out. Read on. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. It says he knows that you need fools, sis. Seek ye first. Seek ye second after you eat your food. Seek ye first the kingdom of God uh -huh. and his righteousness. You seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness? What is righteousness? No. Living right. Living right? Okay, I'm going to show you real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. It should be our righteousness if we don't break the Sabbath day. That's how you become righteous today. Right. You can you can start your righteousness walk right now right. by not breaking the Sabbath. You do the commandments that makes you righteous. That's it. It ain't hard. Right. Can I buy food tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's only one day. All right. Read this. All right. Go back. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 I want to hit. I want to hit that point. Oh, Finish this out real quick, and I'll show you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And then all the other stuff is going to get added to you. You know why? Because you already know you need that. You know you need food. Right. He's going to let you die if you're trying to do right by him. Right. You know what? I don't want to break the Sabbath. I didn't know. I found out. On the, the brother stopped me when I was walking to the spot. To the spot. Now they tell me I can't go buy food. Damn. I was actually already in there and I was about to order my food. But then I was sitting at the bar. I was, I was about to order my food. But I was like, I'm going to wait because my friends didn't come yet. So then I was going to go down there and see, look, whatever was going on, but then I, God, I had to it. stop here. So he, you was in there. He was like, no, 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 go out there real quick. Go walk down. I was going. I was like, I'm gonna have our, I'm gonna have our prophets out here in the corner. You're gonna turn. You're gonna listen. And then right before they close, right before you leave, you're gonna find out. All right, test. Test number one. Now that you found that out, Yo. you think he really gonna let you starve? We got food at the school. When our wives and children, we all got there. We, we got a whole school over there. Everybody, sisters and everything. It's on the back of the fly. So the Sabbath day is actually over at sundown. Give me that real quick and we'll close out. We even to even. But the Sabbath day is the day we're not supposed to buy, we're not supposed to sell, we're not supposed to cook, we're not supposed to, uh, we're supposed to congregate. Yeah, do our own thing. You gotta congregate, be with our brothers and sisters that believe in the Bible. That's the Sabbath day. Keep it that holy. Apart from all the other days of the week. But the Sabbath day starts when? Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So at evening, or when sundown, that actually begins the very next day. It's not at midnight. It's as soon as the sun goes down. When the sun goes down today, it's Sunday. If you go by the Bible calendar, then when it comes back up, that's the finishing off of that day. And then when it goes back down again, it's Monday. So today is currently Saturday, right? So when the sun goes down, what day is it? Sunday. Sunday. So is the Sabbath over? Yes. Yeah. Right. So tonight, you can go to the restaurant. You want? Okay. You see what I'm saying? A few hours you got, you're good. But if you want to come to the school, congregate, and learn some more, we got food there. Okay. That's, we, we understand that. People come all the time. Oh, shit, I can't buy. I'm hungry. Whatever, come to the school. Seek God first, and then all these things can be added to you. But that's your first test, sis. What is the nation?
nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Strong in the Lord, his word.